So let's let's talk a bit about um, selecting the tuning parameter for ridge regression in the lasso. First point is that's important. Uh, the lambda very strongly determines the solution right? if, in, over a broad spectrum. When lambda is zero, we get full least squares. There's no regularization. When lambda is infinity, we get a zero solution in both cases. So choosing lambda is extremely important, and cross-validation is the way that is is a good technique for doing that. Note also that we couldn't use the other methods um, because the D isn't known. What other methods am I talking about? CP and AIC and BIC, um, they all require a, a number of parameters D. And it's not clear what, what D is now. That's actually something interesting to think about. Suppose I've, well, suppose I've, fit a, a, I've, done, I've done a ridge regression with, I started with the 45 variables, like in the credit data. I've, I use a certain lambda. Let's go back to that just so I can point at something, an example. Um, here's our ridge example. Suppose I decide to use a lambda of, of 100, right? And I'm here, and I ask you, well, what's the D for that model? How many parameters have I fit? Well, if I count the number of parameters, the number of non-zero coefficients, it's still the, the full number, 11, right? Because none of the coefficients are zero. So in a sense, um, all of my variables are still there, so my my d number of parameters is still is still p eleven. But that doesn't somehow seem right, right? Because I've shrunk in the coefficients, so they're not fully, they're not they're, the, the number of degrees of freedom isn't isn't as large. So there's a bit of a subtle point here that the number of parameters is not just um, how many parameters I've used, but how I fit them, right? So with ridge regression and lasso. The shrinkage actually affects the very idea of what we, what we mean by number of parameters. So that was a long way of saying that for selecting the um, tuning parameter for ridge regression and lasso, it's really important to use a method that doesn't require uh, the value of D because it's hard to know what D is. So cross-validation fits the bill perfectly. Um, we do exactly what we did for the other methods, for, for, uh, for subset selection, for example. We divide the data up into K parts. We fit the model, let's say k equals 10. We fit the model on nine parts. Say we, we apply ridge regression for, for a whole range of lambdas for the nine parts, and then we, we record the error on the 10th part. We do that in turn for all 10 parts, playing the role of the validation set. And then we add up all the errors together, and we get a, we get a cross-validation curve as a function of lambda. Same for the lasso. So conceptually, it's exactly the same as we as cross validation is exactly the same as we applied it in the other, in for other methods. So let's see what it looks like here for for ridge regression. Here's here's the result of, of cross validation. Um, I'm not sure if it's either five or ten fold. We can check. Here's cross validation as a function of lambda. Again, remember lambda equals small means essentially the least squares model, full least squares over here, and lambda equals large means the coefficient have been driven to zero. So this is the cross-validation error as a function of lambda, and the minimum is occurring around here, around 0.05. Here's, this, here's the same, same thing now, but uh, well, we plot it as a function of lambda, the standardized coefficient. So this is, here are the coefficients for each of the predictors, the, the profiles, and we see how they vary as a function of lambda. So again, over here, there's fully squares, and here they've been, as we move to the right, they're shrunken. And at the minimum value of the curve, this broken line, we get a bunch of guys which are essentially zero, but not exactly zero, because this is ridge, not lasso. And then here are the, the coefficients for the three active variables. Um, and here's for the, this is our, this is the, uh, Simulated data with n equals 50, I think there were two or three truly non-zero coefficients in the population. For the lasso, this is now the, the result of cross-validation. So we plotted the cross-validation error versus the, the L1 norm of the lasso solution divided by the L1 norm of the full least square solution. This is just a, conven a convenient way of scaling the x-axis so that it goes from zero to one, right? The full least squares estimates give us a value of one, and the zero estimates of zero give you a value of zero, and in between we have the, the intermediate lasso solutions. So here's the cross-validation curve. Again, it's got that U-shape that, that Daniela mentioned before, and its minimum is, is at around here, about point, point 0.1, which is quite severe shrinkage. 
which is good here, right? Because we know that the true model has only three non-zero coefficients. And I think it's actually two, even two. better. <laughs> okay, two non-zero coefficients. Um, and we, very good, because here we seem to have picked up exactly two non-zero coefficients, the green and the red, and the rest are exactly zero. So it's in this um, made-up example, it's done exactly the right thing. It's found the, the correct two non-zero features and set everything else exactly equal to zero.